Yo, what's up? I'm Spencer from Under Oath and Slow Tide, and you're hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Now that we get to talk about this new project, solo project, um, new sound from you, um, you know, obviously, you know, I love Under Oath and everything that you've done um, vocally with Under Oath. But listening to this new style and sound from you, like I'm loving this as well. So talk to me a little bit about Slow Tide. And I know this was an idea back in 2015, but what was that creative process from 2015 to now when you're finally releasing new music? Well, so I'll, I'll like kind of break it down the best that I can here. So like I've been playing in bands my whole life. Like a, like the first shows that were like sold out of my local venues and stuff. I was like in a band with my older brother and I was like 12 years old. I've been in rock bands. I've been in punk bands. I've been in hardcore bands. I've been in just like, you know, I I don't know, like everything you could think of as far as that requires guitar, bass, keyboards, or, you know, like I've never been in like a country or hip hop act, but pretty much everything else I got, I've all, I've just, I'm a music lover. So like I've always written music of all different shapes and sizes, you know? Um, so if we, fa- if we go back to like 2013, when Under Oath broke up, I started a project called sleep wave and it was a duo. And that was kind of to take the place of Under Oath. Like I thought at that point in my life, if Under Oath was going to be done, like I listened to everything. I don't even really particularly listen to a ton of heavy music because I'm surrounded by it all the time. But um, if you took that part of my life out, like Under Oath breaking up and I wasn't wanting it to break up at that time, I was like, I have to have that outlet. So I started another like kind of heavier style band, you know, something where I could get the, the aggression out and that kind of kind of thing. So when Under Oath started to get back together, I was writing the second Sleepwave record and most of it, it like kind of had this weird shift because there was a duo. There was a lot of like drugs and alcohol back then. And just, we weren't in really great spots in our lives. And I started to, it started kind of shift. And I was writing like, am I writing a solo record? Like, what am I doing? Like, you know, it, it was just a weird time. So I just was writing a lot and just flying all over, going out to LA. You know, I was living in New York at the time and just like constantly trying to surround myself with other musicians and jamming like in a studio environment. So we were like capturing music and stuff all the time. And um, in 2015, I I was just like, you know what? Like, I just want to like make some music that I want to listen to. And me and my buddy, Nick, we were in California, Nick Bailey. He's like a great writer now. He's like done a lot of rad shit. Um, Is this, is this from runner runner? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Bailey. Nice. I, I don't know if that's, let me, let me runner runner over it. I think it was like, yeah. Okay, cool. Like Go. he's like a big writer now. Like he's written on like big pop songs and shit. He's That's uh, awesome. He's a rad dude. He's just like a homie. And we like we we just like made like a jammy surfy song because we just wanted to have fun. We're like, what we're supposed to do today. Let's let's just do something fun. And it sparked this idea of like, man, I'm always writing stuff like this. Like I should do something with this one day. Okay. So then Under Oath decides to completely get back together in twenty sixteen. So my, my focus kind of shifts and I've got a grip of, I've got like six or seven sleep wave songs and I've got like a couple, what would be the, in the lane of slow time um, that none of those songs ever made the record that I finished in March. But so I shift focus to under oath, under oath tours. We make a record, we get really burnt out. I come home. I'm like, man, I want to like, I want to just do something that's not heavy music again. Like I'm just, burnt out right now. So I just started writing. Um, I did like two or three songs just like with homies and some alone and then boom, it happened. So now I've got, you know, we've started writing an under earth record and I've started writing solo stuff. And now I'm locked down in my house for we, who knows, you know, like at that point it got real scary. There was even talks of like, will live music ever even come back? Like, is it ever going to be possible to tour uh, the way that we used to tour? So I just figured like, Hey man, I'm just, I, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to like mope around my house and get depressed and 
I, I tried my best to just stay busy every day. So I kind of set a schedule for myself where I wake up in, in like, I had this back room in the house that I had at the time. And I would go back there and I had my stu- all my studio stuff set up. It's like nothing crazy. I just had enough to make music, you know, and would go and sit down and, and make music every day. And at the same time, I'm flying in and out of Tampa working on our own stuff. So by the time I leave to make the under oath record in January, I had about 15 slow tide songs. Um, so I booked my other homie, Micah, he, you might've known him from the therefore tomorrow. And he's got his project Micah. Now we, he actually did the first sleep wave demo. Like we're just all homies, you know, like, um, and Chris actually from there for tomorrow played in sleep for a while. we just have this group of friends, you know? So I, me, I booked a uh, two weeks at Micah's house to make this record. Um, just cause I trust him and I love him. And I, you know, like he, I think he's a great producer and just a killer dude all around. So I make the under oath record from January to March. No, January to the end of February, I go home for five days and then I fly back to Orlando and do and make my record. And I went in with 15 songs. We cut 10 and wrote an 11th one in the studio. So none of the old stuff from like 2015 made the cut, but everything that I started writing right before January, 2019 through 2021 is what's on that record. So in the exact same time frame that I was writing under oath. And, uh, and I think that, you know, Aaron, our drummer, has an outlet you know he does Aaron Gillespie stuff which is quite opposite of under oath as well and then me having this I think it's great that we get to do what we do but it also like clears the way I guess for under oath to do what under oath needs to do I think as a writer as an artist you have all these things that you need to express and get out like as a painter you need to paint to express yourself and if these certain sides of you are not being um, executed upon like they're going to start to find their way into the only place you can you know i'm only allowed to do under oath like i have to be this guy like that's who i am to the world and and i understand that but like in reality i'm not like that that's maybe 10 percent of the music that i've worked on my whole life you know like i've i do so much more behind the scenes and working with other artists and stuff that i do that i just never comes out so i was like you know what fuck that i'm just gonna i'm gonna do something with this stuff. And uh, I just kind of put my foot down on myself and was like, I want to, I want to just make this record. So, and it also, not only is it super fun for me to make a record and I played every note of every instrument minus drums, you know, and uh, it, I do believe like looking back on it, it does get some of the stuff out of the way that me and Aaron and Tim having his project and Chris having movie soundtracks, like, if Chris isn't scoring movies, like Undros kind of turns too cinematic. If Aaron's not doing his, you know, singer songwriter stuff, that kind of bleeds into Undroth. And if I'm not doing this pop stuff, like some of these pop elements find their way into Undroth that maybe shouldn't be there. But it's also cool that we're doing all these things because it does also open more doors for Undroth to try things like that as well. But I do, I do think both projects get out of the way of each other in a really special way. Looking back on it making two records at the top of the year, which is pretty crazy. But looking back on it, I'm like, man, I'm glad that I, I did it that way. You were saying like with Under Oath, like the the reunion of it and everything since then kind of burned you out because, you know, whenever Under Oath does something, it's not in a small scale anymore. Um, yeah. So the fact that you're in the studio for this new Under Oath record and then you're still doing your debut solo record how do you not burn out during this process especially because you only had like five days between each record well because of all the all the writing was done beforehand you know for the most part and you know the demos for the the under oath record that comes out in january were like we could have released it it was great which is why we decided to produce our own record um and then we got in there we dug and we pushed and like it was brutal like we're crying, we're punching walls, we're hugging, we're having the best time of our lives, we're having the worst time of our lives. You know, like it was so brutal, but like I think we push ourselves past our limits that we could alone. Like, and I, I, you know, at first, like I don't like to be wrong, but like 
in hindsight I do because I always learn something and I learn shit about myself all the time. And like those guys push me so far and we make each other so uncomfortable to where when you can get around the other side of it and be okay with your ego being hurt or you having to learn or bend or twist for someone else. And then you come out stronger. And then like, by the time I got out of that under oath record, I was like ready. I was like, I'm going to take this shit that I just went through and learned about myself and apply it again over here and go even further and push. So I was like in a, like, I was just ready to create and like seeing a light at the end of the tunnel with potentially live music coming back. And like, I was so glad I didn't sit around and play video games for two years. You know, like I had made all this music. I was, I wanted to finalize it. I'm the kind of person that's like, when it's all on my hard drive and it's demo for and recorded in my studio, that's great. But like, I can't get past it until it's like, okay, it's mastered. You know, like I've done it. It's done. Even though I finished my record in March, it probably won't come out till summer. That's just because of timing with under oath and I'm building a new project from the ground up. You know, you got to kind of like build it. It can't just drop and it would do anything, you know, but um, yeah, it was ready. And, and then, and then like we found out we were having our first baby right around that time, maybe around Christmas time. So I was also like, had this weird motivation, you know, like, Oh, I'm going to have a baby. And like, I want to be like, even, you know, I've been on this journey for like five plus years ever since like kicking all the bad habits and like trying to make myself a better man and healthy and, you know, just physically and mentally. And then when you find out you're having a, a child, it's like, like, you know, like multiplies it by a hundred and you're like, dang, like, I want to do this not just for me now, but also for her, you know, like you're like, so I had like all this motivation to just like make the best music that I ever made in my life. And I, and I do feel like walking away from both of those records, those are the two best records I've made so far. So um, yeah, I'm, I didn't get burnt out at all. I was like stoked to work, you know, like being trapped and like off tour. Like I haven't, that's the longest I've been, since playing a show in front of people since I was 12 years old, you know, like when I was a kid, like I said earlier, like I was in bands all the time and like we played at least once a month live, like my whole life. So being in my mid thirties and now all of a sudden we're not touring. And then that goes for two years. You're like, it's just, it's weird. So like just to get in the studio and like, being around other people that are creating and just, it, it was, it was, I was like looking forward to it. And uh, yeah, it was a lifesaver. I feel like, cause I can't just sit at home anymore. <laughs> now tell me a little bit about this debut single uh, neck high. And what was it about this song that you felt was like the perfect introduction to slow tide? Um, and you also got to collaborate with Sir Sly, another, you know, uh, band that I really love listening to. Um, so what was that collaborative process like during the writing process and even like the recording process? It was cool. Cause like I have, you know, we have a lot of mutual friends and, um, a buddy of mine texted me when he was hanging out with them and said, you know, we were, we were like jamming under us, you know, with the source Sly guys or something. He was like, they're huge fans. And I was like, well, tell them I'm a huge fan too. You know, like, so then we're exchanging numbers and we're all like, you know, they, there was a, so much mutual respect, you know, like um, they love Under Oath. And I, I love, you know, I, I think I found out about them in like 2014 or 15. Like I was living in Brooklyn at the time and I spent a lot of time walking and taking the subway. And you're always in headphones, you know, so I was always jamming new shit. And like, you know, I don't know. Um, so I've been a fan for pretty much since they started dropping music or maybe a year or two after, you know? So, um, and, cause I, and I was working on music in, in that same kind of genre. So when it came up and this was like the last thing I did, this was January of 2019. So right before, so I flew out, I flew out there and hung out and did some other work out in LA and some other like songwriting shit. And then we jammed, um, just came in the room and just like plugged in the guitar and we just just started around it was like being in a band together you know like we just all vibed really well and 
me and Landon just sat down and like really connected. Um, and, uh, it was awesome. It was just like writing with any of my other friends, you know, like when I sit down and write with Tim and Aaron and Chris, it's the same, it's the same vibe. It's just, I haven't known them for 20 years or 17 years or however long. So, um, yeah, it was, it was great. Like I'm sure we'll do it again one day, but, um, yeah, that was the last thing I did before confined to being by myself for forever working on music. So it was dope that I got to do that with some new, you know, new lifelong friends by the time we were done with that. You know, we, I went out there twice and we hung out twice and worked on music a couple times. So it was, it was fun. And Nick High was one of those, uh, one of those jam sessions. And then I took that and, you know, worked on it some more at home. And then when I went to the studio with Micah, we, you know, fine tuned it to where we thought it was gonna be dope, you know? And um, as far as picking that as the opening track, like, I didn't really know. Like I, I, I want to release every song at once. That's just what I'm like. I like when people hear the whole vision because the, the album is an album, you know? Um, so I just kind of listened to like the team on that one and it's upbeat and it's, I don't know. It just, it just shows a different side of me lyrically and, and, you know, and vocally. So I just, the whole record does, but that, I thought that was a great place to start. Um, being a song more of like, a reminder of myself, like no matter how bad shit gets, I, I've always found a way to get through it, like through the darkest of, of, of times and stuff. And a lot of with heavy music, lyrics tend to be darker just because of the style of music. And I thought it was it was a hi, buddy. I see. You. Thank you. Um, I thought it was a great. You know, just just different, you know, in a way to where I could just really show a different side because there is some darker stuff on the slow tide record, but like that song has definitely got more of a hopeful vibe of, you know, getting through the darkness and the depression and, and the hard times. And just, you know, we always get through it somehow. So even if this slow type music is hopeful, I feel like it's still very vulnerable just because now it's just you on your vocals and you're trying new vocal techniques and new lyrics, as you kind of mentioned. So how was that uh, during the recording process? Like how, were you comfortable or how were you getting yourself comfortable to record these songs? And how did Micah step in to help in that vulnerability aspect, knowing that you've experienced working with him on, on sleep wave as well? Yeah. My, you know, me and Micah had done some writing together in the past and stuff. And, um, he's tracked me a handful of times and we're on like the same path too. like, we're both gone through the dark shit. You know, we've both, got off drugs and we're like on a good path and we just have like a, you know, he's almost got like a spiritual vibe to him of like, it's like, it's hard to explain. Like he's one of those people that you could just hug. You know what I mean? Like you're so comfortable because he's just such a genuine person. And that's what I look for when I'm working with people is like, I want to work with good people. I want to work, not, not necessarily, you don't have to be the most talented person in the world, even though Mike is extremely talented. Like, like good hearted people, like people that you connect with on a, on a, you know, on a different level where you just feel like you can be yourself. And I think that's the, the raddest thing with Michael is that he knows both sides of me, obviously, like he's seen me go through all sorts of different stuff. And, um, and I, you know, I've been doing all this work by myself at home, recording my own vocals and all this stuff and then getting in there. And he's just, he's real good at just like kind of reminding me, he's like, you know, like, you know, just relax and then kick, kick back, you know, like this, like this, you know, like how you sing this shit. It's like how you, how you talk and how you are. He's like, he really got me in the headspace of like, you know, like this, it's more like chill, you know? So just, just be yourself. And like, you don't have to be like belting and, and, you know, you know, just be you. And, and that was real helpful. Um, I wish you could put it into better words without you being there, but it's, uh, it's a comfort thing. Me and Micah have like this, we've worked together, like I said, on, on a couple of things that just over the years, like even outside of slow tide and, and or outside of sleep wave and all that stuff. And we, we've always just found ourselves in a room together, just randomly working on writing and shit. So he's, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I'll ever make a, a slow tide record without him. I, I think he's just like, he's like my dude, you know, like, 
he 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 just gets it. It's like brothers from a different mother kind of vibe, you know. Like I don't know, it's just super comfortable. Like me and him together can just. It's like no weirdness at all, which is hard when you're working on music. I, I think like even the under oath guys, like we have a lot of like tension and like things get uncomfortable and people get their feelings hurt. And I think that's what makes it special. But for this, I wanted to do something that's like, this is just me. Like this shouldn't be uncomfortable. This shouldn't be tense. Like I should be pumped and stoked and excited and have someone that I trust that can help me capture what I'm, painting in my brain and like what I'm going for. And like, you know, and I trust him when, when I'm like seeing something, he's like, you know, actually like lay that back and like, you know, drop it down, you know, there instead of going up. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll try that. You know, like it's that kind of vibe. It's not, there's no weirdness there. So it's a real healthy working environment uh, for me and Micah. So. For you vocally, what did you do differently with, with this, uh, with this record? And did you find yourself learning how to sing um, in order to hit certain ranges or vocal ranges that you added to this record? Um, I've been, you know, I've done that my whole life though. Like I was singing in bands before I was screaming in bands. And then, you know, I do a lot of singing in the under oath records and all sorts of different vocal techniques. I've had a vocal coach since like 2005 or six. And every, every year that I, start writing music i find myself able to do more things i just had to put my mind to it like i hear things that i haven't done and i want to do it i just practice you know like i do vocal warm-ups before every session before every practice before every re recording session before every um show and i've been doing that for so long it's like working out like if you work out every day for 20 years you're going to be pretty ripped you know unless you're eating fast food all the time and Luckily, the only fast food that you can do to your voice is smoking, and I don't smoke. So, you know, I, I take care of myself, and I I work out the muscle all the time. So I've, I find myself being like, you know, I worked real hard over the last couple of years on my falsetto, and, you know, I, I applied that. There's actually some, I you know, you've heard some of the under oath singles. I mean, you hear it on Hallelujah on the bridge. I'm singing falsetto and stuff, which is out of the ordinary for under oath, but it happened to fit there. But, you know, I always – try to push myself as a guitar player, as a singer, as a, you know, in any type of instrument, I, I try to push myself past my comfort zone. And I, I don't know, I just listen and I learn, you know. With Hallelujah, would you say that this was some kind of an inspiration from you having Slow Tide in mind because of the writing process that you were doing with Slow Tide? Yeah, probably like those being it coming in and being like, I'm going to sing falsetto here on the bridge, you know, and it was, it's funny because it wasn't even like, I'm, I didn't come in like, I want to do this here because I'm doing Just this all over happened. my other project. No, we were sitting there and the bridge was originally that vocoder that you hear in the back, which is Aaron. And then I had come in at the end with the higher yelling, singing vocal before the scream in the breakdown there. And then we thought it was empty and we thought Chris was going to fill it up more. And then as it went and I was like, I just sang it super light and the engineer was right next to me. I was like, we need something else. And I was like, you know, something like this. And I sang that and it's, you know, falsetto and kind of quiet. He goes, get in there and do that. And I was like, are you sure? Like for this? So it was more like our, the engineer JJ uh, who heard me, explaining something like i was like we need something in there like i didn't i wasn't even suggesting it was me i was like maybe aaron goes in there and does this or whatever and i just sang this thing and, and he was like go in there and do that and that's what ended up living on the record so i went in there and sang that <laughs> so but yeah i don't think i would have thought of that if i hadn't been working on music that i'm doing a lot more falsetto and different vocal styles for sure lastly to close us off like i mean obviously the last two years have been uh, have been exhausting have been painful have been you know heavy on everybody but you know you coming in and working on these two i want to say massive records because i feel like slow tide is not gonna be a slow thing i feel like it's gonna it's gonna build pretty fast I appreciate um, but you coming in and working on these records together being able to successfully record the records being able to release music and then prepping for you know tours and other releases what was the biggest challenge that you felt you faced during this entire process? 
Well, I mean, the biggest challenge, I mean, it was the fear at, at times of being like, should I not be traveling? Like, am I being selfish? Like r- traveling into to do on, under oath stuff, you know, and my lady's pregnant and, you know, it's very much a thing. And like, we took all precautions. We took and stuff, but I felt like, should I not be doing this, you know, at times and, um, and, and staying sane of feeling like, I mean, it got dark, you know, like there was like, should it, like, should we even be doing this at all? Like, what are we going to do with a record and no shows? Like under oath, isn't really a band that, can survive without touring. We're not like a stream. I mean, we, yeah, we stream fine, but it's, that's not like our thing, you know, like that genre or at least like our niche of it, where it's that heavy. It's like, you don't throw that on every time you get in the car. Like you would maybe something like slow tide and that like tame Impala. Like if it comes on every day in my car, like I'm not going to change it. It's fine. Like I love it. I love it when I'm paying attention to the headphones and I love it when it's in the background, like I'm just driving or chilling, you know, but if under oath type band came on every time I got my car, I'm like, God, I gotta, this is too much, you know? So it's like, I, there was times where it's like, like, what are we going to do? Like, are we, are we doomed? You know? And that was, that was a hard to stay out of that headspace. And I do think that when we did those live streams in the middle, that like, that helped my head a lot, like mentally, not get too defeated with with where the you know music industry is at because like i feel like our industry got hit one of the hardest if not the hardest it's like still suffering and like if it's not already hard enough you know for bands out there with you know it's tough and uh when shows are canceling and tours are being postponed or canceled and taking two years off and man i don't know how some of the artists are going to recover from it but um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, that was probably the hardest part was to keep my head out of the gutter like that. Like I just had to stay positive. I just focused on the songs and like being stoked that me and my friends, you know, under earth dudes, like we're making the best stuff we've ever made you know, and we're feeling good about it. Like I haven't felt that way in the studio since like define the great line days of like, we're really doing something. I felt like real, like, man, there's something happening here, you know, like, and then doing the slow tight stuff is just like me by myself being able to exp- paint whatever picture I want. And then like getting a team together during like getting signed and getting management and like all this stuff is happening off my demos. And I'm like, cool, I'm booking the record and I'm going to go. And like at all of that stuff kept, kept me positive. And, but like, I definitely think the fear of as much traveling as I had to do and, um, you know, to Florida just for under oath was a little scary and I didn't want to be selfish, you know, like, so we had a lot of shoved up our nose and lots of, <laughs> lots of, uh, yeah, precautions were taken and anyone they felt postponed things cost us a lot of money, but we couldn't just sit around and do nothing. And then uh, that's why I also had this other idea to take this project to light. So, um, yeah, it was it was tough, but we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. We got a tour coming up. I'm releasing my slow tide stuff, and things are looking up. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. And I'm excited for all of it to to be finally happening. Just because it's been too long. Like I need I need that experience. Uh, I love listening to Underworld all the time, but you need that live show experience. And the same thing with Slow Tide. So it's like I'm looking forward to this, man. Dude, I, I am too. And I, I tell you what, like I, I've been on the fence about the live stream stuff, but like I did, uh, my lady was super pregnant at the time. We couldn't do anything. We couldn't like really leave the house. Um, and La Palooza did the live stream all weekend and we watched the whole thing and it was like so fun and awesome. But at the same time, I was like, God, like I would do anything to be in that crowd right now you know let alone play playing there would have been great but like i was just like how 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 much longer can we go without you know that experience like even as a fan like i'm the kind of person that when i'm off tour any of my friends coming through like i'm always there like i love live music i love music like i'm always i'm always at my homie shows and 
I love going. Like I, I'm a fan. That's why I started playing music. Like I'm never going to lose that side of me. Like pretend like just because people listen to my band, like I don't listen to other bands. Like that's bullshit. Like I'm a huge fan of so many bands and love going to live shows. Like I love being in the crowd. I think it's awesome. And I do agree. It's like, it's such a weird experience. Like I was explaining to my dad, my dad's, you know, a football fan. And I was telling my dad, I was like, it's like, it's, explaining to like a sports person is like going to the game and tailgating and being in the stadium and feeling the energy or watching it on TV. That's the difference from live streaming to being there. Cause my dad asked me, he's like, do you think live streaming is going to take away from concerts? And I was like, I don't think so at all because like nothing can replicate that feeling of getting in a room and having that release. If it's heavy music and you're moshing and sweating and stage diving, or if it's like poppy music and you're dancing and jumping around and joy, like, nothing can replicate that and uh yeah so it's it's due time (laughs) well i i'm looking forward to it man congratulations with uh both the releases so far for the new under oath record and for this debut for uh for slow tide and uh i'm looking forward to doing this again soon man yeah yeah we'll do we'll do some more chats i got i'm gonna be dropping songs randomly until I would drop the whole record when the record's done and you know, it's just timing. I got, I do got to give each band its proper space. So yeah, just don't burn yourself out. That's the, I mean, I feel like that's going to be the hardest part. So I think, I think nowadays though, I was having this conversation. I know we're, we're wrapping it up, but I was having this conversation with my brother. It's not like it was though. Like the, it, the biggest shift in music I've seen is that bands don't go out there and grind like they used to even Sleepwave did that grind thing and it burnt us out. I mean, it tore that band to pieces. Bands aren't doing that anymore. And, and, and I, I kind of back it. Cause it's like, we're not going to go out there on tour and lose money just to be out there to build, you know, the, you have so many tools now, like it's not the same, but you can build music online and build a following and connect with your fans in all sorts of different ways before you go out there to lose money. Like, you, you should at least break even if you're going to go out there and work your ass off because tour is a lot of work and seeing all these bands going out there and losing their asses just to try to make it. I mean, we, that's how we started, but like, I don't see it as much. So I, I, I don't think I'll be burnt out because with slow time, I can control everything, you know, like unless I'm getting some sick tour offer to open for foster the people or something cool, you know, like I, obviously you've got to go, you know, even if it's three days after the under Earth tour ends, but for anything that I'm doing, like I can control it, you know, and that that's the great thing about that is another reason kind of why I wanted to do that is I love the under Earth guys and I love what we do. And under Earth is that spot. And it's like less is more in a way, but also like, we all have to be on the same page and ready. And it's not like guys, it's just like, I don't want to have to live all of my life where I have to rely on other people being ready all the time. Like I writing music every day. I should have another outlet. And uh, that was just advice from my older brother. He was like, if you, this is what you do. Like you should just have other places to put your, your energy. That's not just waiting around on them, you know? Um, so I think it's healthy for me to have this and be able to like, you know, pick and choose. Like, when am I going to play my first show? I'm going to play my first show when there's enough fans that want to see it. You know, like, I'm not going to go get in a van and go, yeah, I'm not going to go get in a van and drive around and play bars for a bunch of people that don't want to hear it or don't know what it is. Like, will I open for people and do that? Sure, that would be great. But if I don't have those opportunities, I'm going to wait and, and, put, and debut the band live when it's ready and people want to see it, you know, so. It took 20 years to learn that, so, I mean. Yeah. Do it right, right? <laughs> right. Took us half our lives to figure it out. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll do great, man. Well, congrats with it again, and congrats with uh, with the newborn. Um, and Thank you, man. Appreciate you said it. You just recently moved as well, so a lot of good things happening. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a crazy couple of years. So 